Dating versus marriage. When you are dating, he takes you out to have a good time. When you are married, he brings home a six pack and asks, what are you drinking? When you are dating, he knows where the hamper is. When you are married, any space on the floor is great for storage of dirty clothes. When you are dating, he likes to discuss things. When you are married, he develops a blank stare. Okay, four-year-old Betty goes to her first wedding and she watches the whole ceremony with you know, great interest. After the ceremony is over, she goes to her mom and says, Mom, why did the bride change your mind? Her mom goes, what do you mean? Well, the bride came down the aisle with one man and then left with another. Welcome to the evening news, where we tell you good evening and then proceed to tell you why it isn't. Have you ever noticed that behind every successful man is a woman? Behind the fall of that successful man is usually another woman. Knowledge is knowing that the tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in the fruit salad. Strange how some people who don't even know their neighbor's name are curious to know if there's extraterrestrial life. Why does somebody believe you when you say there are four billion stars in the sky, but when you tell them the paint is wet, they check? So a man takes his two sons out to eat one evening and they're at this sports bar and there's a, their waitress, you know, takes their order real quick and they wait for a long time, about 45 minutes and finally they hear a loud cheer coming from everybody at the bar and one of the kids says, well, it looks like somebody got their food. Women will never be equal to men until they can walk down the street with a bald head and a beer gut and think that they are sexy. The early bird might get the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Police were called to a daycare today where a three-year-old was resisting a rest. Why is there a light in the fridge, but not the freezer? Five guys with very advanced uh, programming skills go to the defense department and they want a job working on the computers. And the boss there says, okay, you can do it. Uh, is there any thing we should know about you before we hire you and, and the five guys go yeah we're all cannibals so the boss says okay we'll hire you on you're qualified just don't eat anybody while you're here all right so they go okay so a few months pass and uh you know the boss goes up to him and says you know you guys have been doing really good you're doing great with the computers uh but the thing is our janitor has disappeared uh, any of you know anything about that? And, you know, the five guys look at each other and just kind of shake their head and no. The boss walks off and then one of them goes, okay, which one of you guys ate the janitor? We've been eating managers and supervisors that nobody cares about, but somebody had to go and eat somebody important. When I go into a casino, the strangest sign I always see is, if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. So I call it up and I say, hey, I've got an ace and a six and a dealer has a seven. What do I do? If Jimmy cracks corn and no one cares, why did they make a song about it? There's this girl named Dolores and she never really gets a hang of the military clock. So one day she uh, calls the base and says, you know, I'd like to talk to my husband. And the person on the phone says, your husband can be reached at, at 4,700. And Dolores goes, now what time is that? The man who fell into an upholstery machine yesterday is fully recovered. If the professor on Gilligan's Island can make a radio out of a coconut, why can't he fix a hole in a boat? So Glenn Beck walks into a gym and goes to the instructor and says, I want to learn to do the splits. And the instructor says, well, how flexible are you? And Glenn Beck says, I can't make Tuesdays. The computer is a great invention. There's just as many mistakes as any time. But it's nobody's fault. If corn oil is made from corn and vegetable oil is made from vegetables, what is baby oil made of? So there's these three psychiatrists at this convention and they decide, you know, they're walking along they decide, you know what, everybody comes up to us to, for our problems, but no, we never tell, get to tell our problems to anybody. So let's tell each other our problem. And the first psychiatrist says, okay, uh, my problem is, uh, that I'm a compulsive shopper, I am deeply, deeply in debt. So I overbill my patients to try to cover this. 
The second psychiatrist says, you know, I have a really bad drug problem and, and I actually try to get my patients to get drugs for me. And so the third psychiatrist says, you know what, I'm really bad at keeping secrets. You ever notice that when you blow it into a dog's face, they get mad at you? But when you take them for a car ride, they put their head out the window. So this one lady uh, goes out and she buys a hundred goldfish and she can't keep the goldfish you know, in a regular tank so she puts them in her bathtub. And uh, her friend comes over and, and sees, oh wow, you have a hundred goldfish, but you know, how do you take a bath with all the goldfish in the bathtub? And the first lady goes, well, I have to blindfold them all, but it takes a really long time. I want to know who's the first person that looked at a cow and said, let's squeeze those dangling things and drink whatever comes out of them. The local area network in Australia is called the Land Down Under. So this handyman is working at this temple in Pennsylvania, and he asks for a raise, but he gets turned down, so he quits. So he decides to get a job as a handyman in another church. So he goes to the first church, I need to get a job, and the person interviewing him asks, okay, where was Jesus born? And uh, handyman is like, Pittsburgh? So they didn't hire him. So he goes to another church, and he says, um, you know, I need a job as a handyman. Uh, can I work in your church? And the second, the person interviewing him at the second church says, so where was Jesus born? And the guy says, Philadelphia? And he doesn't get hired. So he goes to a third church. The interviewer says, you know, where was Jesus born? And Henneman thinks and goes, Bethlehem? And church guy says, you're hired. And the guy says, I knew it was someplace in Pennsylvania. Boiled egg is hard to beat. So there's a knock on uh, a woman's door and she opens it and the out guy on the outside says, hi, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Shall we talk? And the lady says, yeah, sure, come in. Uh, what do you want to talk about? And the Jehovah's Witness goes, I don't know. I've never made it this far before. When you've seen one shopping center, you've seen them all. There's this married couple, and they've been married for 40 years. They're both in their 60s. So they're out having dinner, and all of a sudden, poof, this fairy appears and says, you know, I'm so proud of you two for being married to each other for 40 years. I'm going to grant you each one wish. So the lady starts thinking about it, and she goes, you know what? I want to take my husband on a trip around the world. So poof, all of a sudden there's all this big stack of cruise line tickets and airplane tickets to all kinds of places in the world, and she gets her wish. So, so the fairy asks the guy and says, what do you want for your wish? And the guy says, you know what? I wish I were married to somebody 30 years younger. And his wife and the fairy are both disappointed, but a promise to grant a wish is, is a promise to grant a wish. So poof, he turns 90 years old. A bicycle can't stand on its own. It's too tired. One day, a little girl is watching her mom do the dishes. And the girl noticed that her mom has some white hairs on her head. And the little girl says, uh, why do you have white hairs on your head? And the mom says, well, every time you do something bad and makes mom cry, she gets white hair. I get white hairs on my head. And the girl thinks, little girl thinks about this and says, is that why grandma's hair is all white? In a democracy, it's your vote that counts. In feudalism, it's your count that votes. So the guy goes to a bar and he's having a couple drinks. And he sees a sign behind the bar that says, 1985 Henway, excellent condition, make an offer. So he goes to the bartender and says, what's a Henway? And the bartender says, oh, about three or four pounds. When a clock gets hungry, it goes back for seconds. So this teacher is uh, teaching a class. Well, basically, she's told the kids to draw for a little bit. And the teacher's kind of wandering around, you know, looking at the kids, you know, drawings and stuff goes up to this one little girl and, and she's, she says, what are you drawing? And the girl says, I'm drawing God. And the teacher says, that's impossible. Nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl says, they will in a moment. Some people have a photographic memory. They just never get it developed. 
So there's this Israeli soldier, and he goes to his uh, commanding officer, says, I want a three-day pass. The commanding officer says, look, you need to uh, do something really awesome to get a three-day pass. We don't just give those away. The Israeli soldier goes away for a little bit, and he comes back, and he's driving an Arab tank. And CO is impressed and says, okay, you could, you could have a three-day pass if you could do that. So his, his friend, he visits a friend, and the friend says, oh, how did you get a three-day pass, by the way? And the Israeli soldier says, uh, well, I was driving along in my tank, and I noticed this Arab tank. I raised the white flag. He waves, waves his white flag. We, we look at each other and say, do you want a three-day pass? And he says, yes. So we switch tanks. Those who get too big for their britches will be exposed in the end. And always remember, never take the DA's first offer.